All right, now we have Abimelech and his uh, commander of his army come and approach Abraham, and, and they wanted to make a treaty because they were seeing how blessed he was. And, and, and that's just a good testament, right? Of course, God is, is separating Abraham. He's creating a nation that he can give us the Bible, and he can give us our Messiah, and he can give us a king to reign forever um, in the throne of David. Um, that will eventually come later. But, you know, that's a good picture of how we should be internally, right? The Old Testament, what it teaches us externally is what we should have internally in the New Testament. So so as, as Abimelech uh, saw that Abraham was blessed physically, you know, that's how we should be as Christians internally, that people should see our peace and our joy, right? And so he wants to make a treaty so that uh, Abraham won't do him any wrong. And Abraham says, okay, but he says, you know, your people have been filling my wells. And of course, that's, that's life, right? That's life for him. That's life for his people, uh, his herds and everything that he has. And Abimelech says, I didn't know, you know, you didn't tell me. And then they, they make a treaty uh, involving um, seven ewes. And, uh, and I think the big deal, the big thing that we can get from this is this idea of filling wells now. Of course, wells and water is a representation of God's presence and eternal life. You know, Jesus has this great conversation with a woman at a well in John chapter 4. And he tells her, you know, if you knew who I was, if you knew that I was God, I was the Messiah, you would ask me for a drink. And she's like, what do you mean? And he's talking about eternal life uh, and God's presence and, and the water that flows spiritually from him to us. And so, you know, Abraham here says, your people or filling my wells is, is just a great representation of people trying to um, just suppress and fill and, and, and get rid of the presence of God in our lives. And so as people want to just be part of our life and, and, and as people want to be around us and with us, you know, our one mandate should be as long as you're not trying to suppress the presence of God in my life, right? The, the whole issue in the New Testament that, that Jesus and Paul had a problem with was when believers in him, the believers in Jesus, were around other people who tried to suppress eternal life in them, pretty much with religion, pretty much, you know, the, the, the thing that they hated, Jesus and Paul hated in the New Testament, was this idea that you had to earn your way to God. The, the Pharisees is who Jesus had an issue with, and, and same thing with Paul, especially in the book of Galatians, which I feel like I always talk about. He was just so upset that people came in and tried to teach this church at Galatia that they had to earn their way to God, that they had to follow rules and laws, and, he, and, and it's not so, right? And so that suppresses, that fills the well, that gets rid of the presence of God. Because if you try to earn your way to God, you've lost God, haven't you? Um, and, and Paul even went to the point of saying, you know, they should be, they should be, they're a curse. They should go ahead and get rid of themselves, right? I mean, that's the biggest enemy of the gospel. It's, it's not atheism. It's not um, people who don't want to acknowledge God. It's people who have this false sense of, of acknowledging God through working for his favor. So, so, so my advice to you is make sure you're just um, cautious that there's people out there who want to fill your well. They want to convince you that you've got to earn your way to God, and you need to tell them that, right? That's what Abraham did, that Abimelech said, well, you didn't tell me. You need to tell people. You know, hey, you're trying to get rid of the presence of God in my life by telling me I've got to earn my way when all I have to do is trust in Jesus and what he did for me.